When you have dogs, this is your best friend. Rooster. White fur or hair. She doesn't have fur. She has hair. But every time I do one of these and I'm editing, I see a hair or something. So I got this now. And especially when you wear black. Okay. Today was the one day of the year where I get ready for winter. Yeah, because it got cold. I didn't even look at, I have not looked at the weather in weeks because it hasn't changed. It's been kind of hot in the day, no rain, and cool at night, but not too cold. Well, last night it caught me by surprise and went down to 30. That's what my thermometer said. Usually, if they're predicting 35 degrees for, t for town, I'm 5 degrees cooler because we're in this valley and the mountains. It's always cooler, so... Didn't have anything ready. So now I cleaned the shed out today. Got everything, my normal rituals uh, done. And, you know, when you live rural, you require, it. it you got to have a lot of stuff, man. A lot of tools, a lot of yard tools. Uh, so you have a lot of stuff and it doesn't take long for your shed to get filled up. So I got out there today. It's on my other channel. Video's already posted. You can check it out. And then I loaded up that giant doghouse that Libby used to like. Took that over to Peter's. That was a task, getting that in my truck by myself. And that's another thing. When you live alone, you figure out how to do the impossible. Because you have no choice. You got nobody to help you. So you figure these things out. And... I didn't hardly lift a thing. Uh, I used economics, you know, levers and, you know, things like that. Economics. I think I plunked that class. I don't know. So we got the heating pads in the dog barrels. Now, I will be building Millie and Tilly a doghouse that's insulated. They like those barrels, so we're going to build a casing for those barrels that they like and slip those in with insulated walls and a ceiling and all they need is the little heating pads that they got they're made for dogs uh, I bought those last year and they work great and right now I got those on for them I got them on the lowest setting because it isn't going to get that cold and it's got a frost warning for tonight I love this time of year, man. I used to hate winter, and I love it now. I like that the time changes. Uh, because it makes it gives me a longer evening to relax. Because when it's daylight till 8, 9 o'clock at night, you're always doing something. And, it's, you know, sooner sit down, it's time to go to bed. So I like the evenings. Have a cup of coffee, you know watch some shows and and I like wearing my sweats you know I just put the shorts away and I think it's late enough in the month it's not gonna it, we're not gonna see any more hot weather so I spent today getting ready for winter got their heated dog bucket out so they're warm their water will not freeze of course there's just Lily now in the dog apartment uh, I just had to, I fed them not long ago, probably an hour and a half ago, and I'm cooking their food now, so everything gets devoured. And I went in there to check on Libby, or, see, I'm still confused, even, I'm, I'm even calling them the names of dogs that I don't have anymore that have passed on. I went in there to check on her, and I looked down in her dog bowl, and I'm like, what is all that black stuff on there? It was ants. It was totally covered in ants. She'd already ate all the food. And so I grabbed the, it's her bowls in a, one of those things that it's elevated. So I grabbed the whole thing, took it outside 
and I got my bottle from the grill, a bottle of water, and I squirted it. If you've ever done that with ants, they will, they all collect into a pile and float. And I think they were fire ants. Thank God I didn't get stung. But they float in a big old ball. And most of them will survive. It's pretty cool to see that. I've seen a documentary on that. I didn't know. I didn't ever know that. And then it reminded me when I filled it up with water. So I got to figure out where the ants are coming in. I'll put a little bor uh, boric acid around the outside walls. That'll take care of that. They track that back to the nest and it kills them. All of them. You never have a trouble again. Or you can take a lid, you know, a lid to a mayonnaise jar, put some boric acid in there, put a little bit of sugar, which I don't have any sugar in this house, and a little bit of water, mix it up, and it will attract them to that and kills them. So that is something, and boric, boric acid is cheap, comes in the powder form. You can get it at the dollar store for a couple bucks. Uh, roaches, it works on air. I mean, but it's really good for roaches. I have never in my life lived in a place that had roaches, never will. But I bought a refrigerator one time when I was living in Oklahoma. I bought a used refrigerator. That's why I don't buy the used appliances. And I, we, I hauled it into the house. I think I had some, a friend of mine help me. Set it in the kitchen. The next morning, I woke up and there were roaches everywhere. Oh, my God. I was going to move. But then I remembered, hey, just get some boric acid. And I just, you, you got to do a light misting of it. Wherever they go behind appliances, within 24 hours, they were no sign of any more roaches. So if you ever buy an old appliance, leave it outside a few days and hit it with some of that boric acid powder. A very fine mist. They track over it. They go to wash themselves or eat, and they die. And, it, uh, and I worked for Orkin for a very short time in the late 80s. Orkin Pest Control. And they got all these chemicals. Boric acid is the best thing to use. They don't use it because it works. Uh, but if you ever had cock, now I, that's a whole nother video there. When I worked for them, I was living in Cleveland, Ohio suburb and I had the hood. And let me tell you, there were some nasty, nasty houses and you get a, a cockroach infestation that is too bad. You're never getting rid of them. About all you can do is fumigate the house. And most of the people that have cockroaches cannot afford to fumigation because back then it was like $10,000, probably triple that, quadruple that. Now they put a big tent over the house, the entire house. And if you've ever been to any, any city back East up North, they're huge three, three story houses with a basement and they do have tents that they put completely over that i don't they may have a whole different method now i don't know this was what 30 35 years ago but they are hard to get rid of and let me let you in on a little secret you some of you may not know this some of you will appreciate this advice if you get roped into a contract with one of them pest control places orkin terminex here's what they do I know I worked there. You have to go to school for like a month before you even, they even put you out on the street. But the chemicals they use are regulated by the federal government. And they, there's very little chemicals that go in. You got the little pump sprayers and they're, they're mixed with water. All the chemicals are mixed with water. Uh, I can't even remember some of the names. There was one we used for roaches or, or wreath. I can't, I can't even remember, but anyway, it was not enough to kill or do anything. The deal they, these companies make is you go in once a month, you sign a contract, they come in once a month and they spray. Well, it's just enough to keep the population down, but not kill it off. And they spot spray. So it's the, 
they're not intending to get rid of your pest problem. Now, you may not have something like that if you call a private pest control place. Uh, but those chains, Orkin, Orkin is the worst. I hated that job. It was one of the worst jobs I ever worked in my life. You go in at 8 in the morning or 7 or 8 in the morning. I don't remember what it was. But you didn't get home till 10, 11 at night. Because after you, and they give you so many calls to do every day, you're not coming into the office till dark. They give you a company truck. They have to because you live in it. But they expect you when you get back to the office to go back. They got a room. It's like an, uh, a bunch of booths with a phone. And you go through a list called the bad debt list. It's people who have not paid for their month or are behind. And you have to call and arrange to pick up a payment. And if you do, which is very hard to do, you know, especially my route, I had the hood, okay? There are people that didn't have no money. So not only that, if you were in that neighborhood, you were required, they could call you at any time and say, hey, they knew where your route was. You want to stop by such and such, such and such house, try to make a collection? You had to do it. And, man, it was so late by the time you got home. And I hated that job with a pet. The job itself, doing the work, wasn't, wasn't bad. You got to meet people and go all over the place, you know. Uh, I had an incident one day, and they changed my route. I, I was sitting in a parking lot in East Cleveland, not a good neighborhood, and it was a vacant parking lot, and I was sitting there doing paperwork, figuring out where I was going next. Well, this guy come up to my, and I had the window down and, you know, back in the late eighties, it was bad, but it was nothing like it is now. And this guy, if I had a short sleeve shirt, I'd show you this guy. You guys have probably, if you watch my videos, seen a big scar right here. Well, the guy had a broken beer bottle and he stuck it in the window and he said, give me your, again, they knew you carried cash. And I, I happened to have some that day. He says, give me your cash. I said, no. And I rolled up the window on his arm and, and he got me, tore right through my white shirt. And then I hit reverse. And he went to run around and there was a wall here, a brick wall. It was like an old business that burned down or they tore down something. And there was a, and I backed up and there was a wall and he went to run around to the other side for whatever reason. And I pinned him up against the wall <laughs> with the truck and I had to have broken something. Uh, did I call the police? No, I called my dispatch and told them what happened and they called the police and I had to, I had to answer some questions, fill out a report. But, uh, after that night. I got a new route out, a rural route, but yeah, I don't know how I got off on this tangent. I, I not planned to talk about pest control, but I guess we're talking about it, but yeah, horrible job and don't ever get involved in one of them contracts. Uh, they're not going to get rid of nothing for you. The only thing they will get rid of is termites because that is a, that is a pretty, you know, involved job where they got a drill in your house uh that's usually the commercial side of it but that's how they make their money man all these commercial places mcdonald's all that they just put enough down to last for a month and that's it they know what they're doing that's american business for you you know don't don't give them what you're capable of give them a half-assed job but keep coming back. And that's the society we have evolved into. I guess that's it. I didn't get one up yesterday for you guys. Uh, I had a, the previous post on the, or video uh, podcast on this channel was doing so well. I didn't want to put a new one up and stop that. So I left it up for a day. This, this channel don't make much a podcast, maybe five, six bucks a podcast. So it was in, 
in the best interest to leave that one up and not do one. So, but we did one tonight. Go over on ch other channel, watch Tall Mountain Live, and check out that video today. It's a pretty good one. Thanks for watching. Happy trails.